Welcome back, Renee. We love yeah. you. We love you so much. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. I keep yawning, and it's nothing to do with what to do with you. It's to it do with really the back. hurts. I'm trying yeah. quite hard here. Yeah, and I'm speaking as someone who's a recovering productaholic. Um, <laughs> I made that myself. Uh, mm-hmm. This I was thinking about this uh, yesterday. The proof of progress is in the speed of recovery. Activate your energy. Welcome to the Activated Authors Podcast, a show where we distill the core principles of what it takes to become a happy, healthy, and productive author, no matter what stage of the journey you're at. I'm your host, Daniel Wilcox. I'm an international best-selling author, as well as an author coach, speaker, and creative entrepreneur. But most importantly, I'm a lifelong student of all things productivity, psychology, and human behavior. Thank you for joining me for today's episode. Without further ado, let's dive in. What is up, Activators? And welcome back to another episode of the Activated Authors Podcast with myself, Daniel Wilcox. And here with me every single goddamn week is... Immemorable Samantha Frost. The immemorable <laughs> Samantha Frost. How are you doing, Samantha Frost, of the <laughs> immemorable tribe? <laughs> well, I mean, I did just tell you five minutes ago, but because I'm easily forgettable. Mm. You're, you're having to ask again. No, I'm okay. I'm okay. It's been, it's been, um, it's been some time. But, um, I'm, I'm doing okay. How are you doing? Good to hear. Um, I am doing okay. <laughs> no, I, uh, I know I've, I've spoken to you about this already, but like, I, <laughs> for the benefit of the podcast, so that it's not just like, you know, we said that thing. Oh yeah, yeah we spoke about that. Oh, <laughs> good. Right. See ya. Um, no, I, I am really coming around to the fact that I am a serial overdoer in a very, very big way. And for people listening on the podcast who did not get to see Sam's kind of looking around, not to like... <laughs> <laughs> jump out like can't, can't say anything but like i'm it's a weird one because uh <laughs> i had this chat with my sister who obviously has known me for quite a while some would say her whole life um and i've always been someone who's been quite uh like a bit of a go-getter like i will i will get involved in stuff i'll do things like i like to you know make the most of my time but it really doesn't seem to be like the last few years it's kind of just so much more of that and every time i think i've kind of like pulled back a chunk something else will pop up that's like unmissable or you know and i had an email from an author friend of mine yesterday that i've not spoken to in about two years and i kind of i kind of want to get the exact wording i won't obviously say who they were because you know uh all that kind of stuff but the exact wording in in one of the hello paragraphs was um oh yeah anyway hope you're well you used to do way too many things at once i'm curious how that's all going so the answer to that and i won't say the name is um not well <laughs> same 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 so yeah and like there are there are reasons for that that i won't go into on the podcast like i'm i'm pretty sure like there, there are a couple of like personal reasons why at this point in my life anyway i'm keeping myself pretty busy um but it's that thing that once you become aware of it again you have that moment of like right how can i Mm-hmm. really really pull this back and keep what is effective keep the things that you enjoy and strike that balance and one thing that i'm really struggling and this is going into like a therapy session for myself uh <laughs> <laughs> hi i'm doing fine how are you no um one thing that i'm really discovering about myself is that because i've been so wrapped up in the the quick release um schedule of writing with you know the amount of books i've written over the last few years yeah it is very difficult to realign expectations to slow down because for perspective for new listeners like I was on like pretty much a minimum of a book a month schedule Mm -hmm. like 2020 was 20 books um and so going from that now to because you know I've got other things going on but going from that now to being like I'll look at like maybe a few books a year it hurts if like yeah and I I don't say that lightly it physically hurts to pull the brakes because I got so used to that way of working mm-hmm. that this readjustment is it's just tough it's just tough is it like when you've been traveling at 70 on the motorway yes and you suddenly hit like a 30 mile stretch and like I'm, yep. I'm i'm if anything i'm going backwards yes yeah it really is so um yeah trying to uh, align a lot of my expectations and look at some of that stuff but i mean broadly speaking trucking along trucking i would just along. like to uh, say if anyone is watching the podcast and you are wondering what <laughs> that lump is. 
That is my dog. He has unmade my bed so he could get in it. And he is slowly just releasing no noxious gas into mm. the room while mm. snoring away in, in my bed. Nice. So, like, I don't have a, I don't know, it's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, it does look a bit suspect from here. Yeah. Like when a kid um, puts their pillow in to try and convince their mm -hmm. parents that they're in when they snuck out. Yeah. It's yeah. not a Ferris Bueller. It's a pug. Nice. Mm. So what has been going on with you? What have you been up to, Sam? I have been. So I'm just I'm I'm trying to think um, how to attack this question, uh, whether to go down like professional or personal um, kind of first because it's me so I'll cover everything um so I've been um editing my poems mm -hmm. um got through a stack of those this week we'll be doing some more um tonight actually and I was talking to my sister about this it's a weird one because when I write the poems it is a bloodletting of sorts it's fast I don't I don't stop. I don't look back. I just write until I'm like, okay, that's done. And then I feel a sense of relief and, you know, catharsis and all of that good stuff. And when I perform my poems, it's a readjustment of anger or passion that has been like placed in my body as trauma and it's venting it out at the people or situation or whatever that I'm aiming it at. But editing the poems, you, I have to sit in that for an extended amount of time. Mm. And like, you know, is this the right word choice? Should this go here? That kind of thing. And it's a very, very different um experience and because a lot of my poems um are deeply personal it's been it's been a bit of a struggle some of them um but I'm getting you know I'm getting through them it's getting done uh personally I'm I'm coming out of a really tough kind of I would say like five six seven days um starting to feel like the slight relief but yeah it's been it's been tough but working generally speaking um has been on the poems and officially today the 3rd of November my business is now officially official mm. I can invoice people from my business account now nice moving forward I like it now I just need to find people to invoice yes <laughs> <laughs> so if you're out there and you fancy an invoice, do get in touch at activatedauthors at gmail.com uh, mm. and just request an invoice. Yeah. And I we will, will charge and... you accordingly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will expect payment within 30 days or I'm getting lawyers <laughs> <always> involved. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. And the other thing to mention as well, I guess, between both of us is that Nano has officially kicked off, which oh, means God, our yeah. 50k writing camp. We are now, as of recording, on day three. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, I, I, I love seeing the numbers rack up like we've got the uh the tracker sheet and you know everyone's chipping away and doing their, their bits and pieces and it just seems to be quite a good um feeling in the group at the minute of just people yeah. getting it done writing the words enjoying the story um, yeah so i'm enjoying it i don't know what how you found it so far well i just i'm finding it kind of wholesome in a weird mm. way like each nano is different yes um and you know, we've got like returning faces, we've got faces that never left and we've got new faces. So it's like a it's like a beautiful mix of of people. Um, and so, you know, with that comes like a, a slightly different energy each year. Mm -hmm. And this year, just everyone just seems so happy to be there. Yep. Like, <laughs> they're like just looking around like this is kind of cool. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, it's it's really lovely, actually. Um, it's been a really lovely couple of days and um one of my favorite things is when we are um out of like this period of time and people are doing the sprints um just like regular sprints and activated authors 
you know you'll you'll look up from your work and you'll see just you know different um levels of concentration or whatever on people's faces but during nano everyone gets nano face and it makes me so happy and yeah. uh, nano face is this <laughs> <laughs> the intensity just gets cranked up yeah yeah how are you finding it yeah i'm enjoying it it's nice uh, as, as you say like each year is different it has a very very different energy um mm -hmm. and yeah it's nice to have those faces around and just like it's it's always nice to kind of have that collective purpose yeah because obviously as you say during the rest of the year we do live sprints and we all jump on zooms and we all do that kind of stuff mm -hmm. um and everyone's kind of you know at different stages of work on different projects yeah and so to have the majority of people jumping in and going for that fifty thousand, kind of like buoying each other along and you know doing their bit is quite cool um and then because this is the first year that we truly integrated the writing camp and the, you know the, the challenge hit 50,000 with just other people that want to work on a particular project yes. so for example myself I'm not participating this year because I'm editing I've got like two books that I've drafted that I, I need to edit more than anything else mm -hmm. um like we've kind of separated those on on the sheet itself so that we kind of accommodated that but as, everyone's still riding that vibe everyone's still you know mm -hmm. there and there's that energy and yeah it's just it's just really nice to be a part of and to see that come together and you know to say this is the third year that has happened like yeah. it's you know re really a, kind of a privilege to be a part of that process um and the book that i'm editing alongside it is uh, an upcoming non-fiction of mine which is fifty thousand words in 30 days so mm -hmm. the book somehow poetically that i'm editing during the fifty thousand word book uh, fifty thousand word writing camp is the book on how to do the fifty thousand word writing camp so yeah. timing's a little off but like it's there and <laughs> to be fair like the the message of that book isn't just for this particular challenge but more no. just how to challenge yourself to increase your word counts mm -hmm. um so yeah it's as you say it's wholesome i think that's probably the perfect word for it yeah it's yeah it does it just has a really nice vibe to it mm -hmm. do you have that's right i just took Ooh. over how do you like that go for how it did i like, you it. like that i took the reins i like them apples i'm holding up an apple oh my god but you said apples and that's a singular apple i've got another one i don't have another one yeah exactly <laughs> Wait, there's another one. This is the second no. one. See? Well, no, because that first one I took a bite out of, but this one hasn't been eaten, so. <laughs> we can all turn things around quickly in our hands, Dan. <laughs> it would freak you out if I just did that and there was like, absolutely, see, no, no bites at all. Uh... How how <laughs> wet and sticky is your hand with apple juice right now? It's not, because that was a whole apple. Uh-huh, sure. Okay, moving on from apple juice. <laughs> see. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a takeaway from this week? um i'm really holding back burger king right move on cool yeah let's move on um <laughs> that will run out eventually although i'm gonna end up going to like i'm gonna be googling like indonesian takeaways and like somalian um <laughs> so my key takeaway this week um i think it's kind of what i said at the beginning it's it's really really doing my best to zero in on the things that are working mm -hmm. um and i think that one thing that will be coming up for me in the next few weeks when i can kind of get to it is a full like looking into what next year will will hold because yeah um i'm getting to a point where it feels like a lot of the projects that i've got are beginning to kind of show alignment in certain ways that it's hard to say without kind of getting specifics, but um, I, I think I'm starting to detect a pulse of what the future few mm. years could be if I you know keep on that role and you know stick with what I'm currently doing. So yeah, it's um, paying attention to work volume. Nice. And and when you're planning next year, are you are you doing quarterly? Are you doing your set tiles? What are you doing? I think I'll do both. Yeah, that makes sense. I think strategically I'll do quartiles and then operationally I'll do septiles. Oh, you said quartiles. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. What's your key takeaway, Sam? Uh, I think it just <laughs> changed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I wrote it down so that I would get the wording right. this i was thinking about this uh yesterday 
Uh, my key takeaway is that proof of progress is in the speed of recovery. Ah, mm. oh. yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, if you're building muscle, for example, mm. or you're upping your stamina, your heart rate is naturally going to increase during the high intensity of exercise. And then when you stop, the quicker it can like get back down to baseline shows the like the fitter that you are like the speed of that recovery is showing I mean roughly is showing you that um and I think it really applies to just like progress across the board because this week I had one of the darkest days I've had in a really really long time um and I won't go into it but it was bad um and then the next day, I kind of looked at what that day had been and what it could have been. And I realized that I had no intention of repeating that day. And not just in a like, like uh, never again, not, not in that kind of way, just in a like, I have no desire or need to do that again today. Mm. And it was that like, you know, I didn't and I'm still not fully OK. I'm still not fully over it, but it's that return to baseline, that return to mission or normality or whatever it is that I think shows you the progress that that you've made. Mm. So, yeah, that was that's my key takeaway. This um, OK, so Adam. going into our win yeah. from the Expected Authors community. And this week, as well. uh, we're going to keep this one brief because it's longer over in the Slack, but I think this kind of says it all. But welcome back, Renee. We love yeah. you. We love you so much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's amazing to have you back in Sprint. So, yeah, yeah. that's our win for this week. Yeah. Uh, and so into the question. So, uh, Sam, do you have the question? Um. Well. Not so much a question, more of a statement. <laughs> yeah, I do because you sent it to me. Would you like me to do it? No. Okay. How about you stay in your lane, Dan, and I'll try and remember what you text me. All right. Okay. Uh, top tips for new authors. What top tools. They? Top tools. I got so close. <laughs> and the irony is that people listening to this will have seen this in the title, so they know what the question is. <laughs> yeah. So there's no need for any of that. Yeah. So, so this week, <laughs> the question is, what are your top tools for new authors. Mm. Top tools. Top tools. So, yeah, I, I, I figured, again, because we're kind of um, going around this of, of starting all these categories, I think this is quite a, a big one for people because trying to pick the right tools for mm -hmm. anything um can be a bit of a cyclical nightmare and i'm speaking as someone who's a recovering productaholic um <laughs> made that myself uh mm -hmm. but i i was the type of guy who would spend weeks researching the right tool for say project tracking or something like that yeah and then i'd look through all the different lists of all the different like massive ones and, and what they did and then I would dive in, start one, do all the things that I need to do. And then three weeks later, it'd be like, oh, there's a better one over here. This will do yeah. better. And I would hop and I would hop and I would hop. And the um, conclusion I came to at the end was the best. When it comes to picking the right tools, anything, if you're the one that works for you, or even the one that you, you know, stick with, you've been most, writing for a while, but you're looking like, at kind of what's that's, around That's all it has to do. 2022. Mm -hmm. um, I have kind of put this into a few different categories, depending on what stage of the journey that you're at, because obviously, you know, writing or top tools for new authors that can cover a huge scope. Yeah. Um, everything from your publishing to your marketing, your business, your writing, all that kind of stuff. So I figured we'd break this down and probably start quite early on in the process towards the writing. Mm -hmm. Um, look at some options for publishing and some of the key players in that arena. Uh, look at some things for marketing and then a little bit for business as well. All right. Um, and as with any of these, I mean, these are our experiences. There are other tools out on the market. These are the ones I'm familiar with, I've used, and I know that you've used a fair bunch of these as well. Um, so I'm not I, mean, I, I don't know what you're about to say. Oh, you definitely yes, have. definitely. You definitely have. Um, <laughs> so let's start then with, if you are a new writer, mm -hmm. you've got ideas of coming to the page. Mm -hmm. What do you use, Sam, to plot your book? 
I personally, myself, mm-hmm. use poster boards and post-its and Pinterest and anything that begins with P, apparently. Nice. Um, yeah. But I think there's, there's, so there's lots of obviously different ideas um, on, on plotting and it completely depends on kind of how you feel about plotting. I will put in the caveat uh, that Dan always says, which is if this is your first book, you don't have a process yet. So don't worry Mm. about what is my process because that comes over many, many books and it changes and it morphs and it's, it's ever like, shifting slightly and it will it will alter from book to book but this is your first book you're very excited and you want to plot it or plan it and you've kind of no idea what to do I think the first thing to ask yourself is are you a visual person Mm -hmm. because if you are Pinterest is your best friend or I mean Instagram as well you can find some beautiful pictures on Instagram but Pinterest is specifically kind of designed to be eye porn um so <laughs> you can type in anything and find like a whole array of of different things um so you can kind of get like a mood board together of you know how you want it to feel and like the colors and all of that kind of stuff you can print them out and stick them on stuff or if you you know you don't have a printer or you don't want to do that you can make a board in pinterest or mm-hmm. you know wherever you want to do it um you could do it on like google sheets I'm sure there's other things. That's the end of my list. Google Sheets is the end of my list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, like you say as well, like post-it notes and things are like absolutely fine. Like it doesn't have to be yeah. anything necessarily massively complicated or technological. No. Um, I've got uh, a few here that I've kind of come across over the years that, have sort of, that I use for for plotting. But I mean, for me, a big one is is Pinterest because those mood boards, I am a very visual person. I need to know yeah. the feel and the tone and the colours of mm-hmm. the story, um, which doesn't sound like it should make sense but if you look at like a film and like kind of like the general color grading of how a film looks and that tone and yeah so that's kind of um a big one for me and then programs like i've seen people plan books in word i've seen them do it in google docs for me personally i do a lot of my planning in scrivener um for people that aren't familiar with scrivener it costs about 30 30 dollars or 30 quid and then um it's not expensive it's a one-time payment but it's a program in which you can write you can plan it's got binders and folders and all these different ways to organize what you do um and for me it's that's that's as simple as it needs to be i make sort of folders with characters if i need to i kind of put like you know um bits of research in there and then i break it all down in a way that works for my head mm-hmm. um programs like notion are mm-hmm. really really good because they're very very flexible i've seen a yeah. few people plan books in in notion um, and we'll pop all these links in the show notes. Don't worry, folks. Sam you'll, you'll pop all those links in the show Will notes. Will you? Perfect. And uh, then I'll pop them in the show notes. Yeah, no worries. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, so Notion is a good one. And that's basically, just think of it as almost like an empty canvas in which you can like sandbox. add text images. Yeah, it's a sandbox. Uh, text images, to-dos, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm currently using that Notion right now for a collaborative project for the first time, mm. which has been quite a nice experience. Um, and then there are loads of uh, programs out there for world building and things. You can use like World Anvil. Um, there's programs yeah. like Plotter, which provide templates to help you with story structure and story beats, which can be yes. very, very useful. Um, but again, like uh, with all of these, like the options are infinite and it's it's what works for you. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of a, a broad overview of plotting. Well, I was just going to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to add one thing. So when I when I st- like sat down and started planning, um, Air to the Universe, like I went to Pinterest and and all of that, and I'd seen um Jenna's YouTube on how to kind of plan with post its and poster board, and that's kind of where I got that from. But I think a really good question to ask yourself, other than like, you know, am I a visual person? Is like if you've got a big project coming up whether that's at work whether that's I don't know, like a holiday or like Christmas or whatever it is where that you've got that's lots of moving pieces and you've kind of got to figure it out just ask yourself how you normally go about planning stuff like that because that's something that you're already familiar with and then just kind of you know try and like use that kind of template that you already do whether you're a you know paper and pen writing out like a big long to-do list or yeah you know, i think just especially for your first book just lean into what you already know 
because mm-hmm. there's going to be so much that you don't so like create that barrier of comfort for yourself with with the tools and things and then go from there yeah yeah i mean as i say my my big one's in plotting pinterest for the mood and then scrivener mm-hmm. just to write stuff down yeah. um and then as i say i'm playing with notion at the minute um and then also And this isn't necessarily a tool, but it's just more of a technique, but like making the most of vomit drafts. <laughs> like yes. for me, I'm, I will literally sit with a blank page and, and type the words, what is this story about? Okay, how do I get to where I need to go? All right, what if there's this person? Oh, and this person, no, that will be crap. And I, I will literally word for word write that down as if I've just got this block. But in doing that, it allows my mind to throw ideas and into process. And for whatever reason, mm-hmm. like it really helps me kind of just get, get the, the wheels turning. Yeah. I did yeah. a very similar thing, um, but instead of writing it down, I paced up and down my living room with my recorder um, yeah. in my phone, and it's literally the same as that. Like, well, but if that if that's the case, then surely they would have come before. It makes no sense. Oh my god, this is a huge pothole. No, because this. Oh, this could happen, mm-hmm. and it is quite literally half an hour of me just sounding insane. But, yeah, and you rarely like, use it again. No, you don't need to go anywhere near it again. No, but it's just the process. So that brings of like us around from getting it planning, out of your brain. What we will mention because this will be it, a touch jarring like, for people watching on YouTube up. and something magic probably in just yeah. the flow of how it's edited. Uh, yeah. We have had to take uh, a couple of hours break between recording, so we'll we'll dive back into the flow, but just to account yeah. for that inconsistency on the YouTube and for people. And what is Luna doing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> life is better upside down apparently <laughs> but yeah so that covers um all of our planning all of our plotting side of things so when it comes to writing your book mm. what do you need Sam? you need a can-do attitude <laughs> and then really just your um writing tool of choice so Laptop, typewriter, pen, pencil, stick and paint and a wall. Mm. I wouldn't recommend the last one. You'd have to oh. keep like dipping. It'd be a fucking nightmare. Um, but yeah, it's, if, you know, you've got your plan mm-hmm. plotted. You know what you want to say. And so the next part, which arguably is one of the trickiest parts, mm. is also the simplest in the sense of you just got to sit your ass down or stand at a standing desk because some people are weird mm-hmm. and go. Yep. Just go. Like, if this is your first time writing, like, long form, which I am imagining it is because we're talking about first novel. I don't know. Maybe someone has written, like, a nonfiction or they've done, like, a thesis or, or you know, like, big kind of thing before. Um, Just be aware that like it's going to be uncomfortable to begin with mm-hmm. um well could go a couple of ways it could be uncomfortable to begin with or you could be filled with all the fury of the muses yes um, and then usually like day three or four then it's going to start to get uncomfortable and it's going to remain uncomfortable for a while mm-hmm. uh because you're just gonna be like i'm writing shit da, 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 da. but for most people and we've talked about this before like editing as you go does not work mm-hmm. There are a few people where the exception proves the rule. In kinks. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> I wouldn't suggest starting off thinking you're that person. Yeah. Um, because you're just gonna you you're gonna type yourself into like an early grave. So just start and then keep going. And Take... then... oh sorry, gone. What do you use? Oh, okay. So I mean, you mentioned Scrivener mm-hmm. and Plotter, you said, didn't you? Yes, I don't personally use Plotter for that side of things, but... There yeah. are a few people in the community that like that Plotter because um, it's got all the different like templates right there so you can kind of write on them, I assume. Mm-hmm. Um, me, personally, I like just to use... Um, not Microsoft Word. It's Sheets, I guess. Is it? Uh, Google Docs. Google Docs, thank you. Um, just because it like automatically saves... Mm-hmm. although i do still save it don't rely on anybody else <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> but then there's also things like pro writing aid um which 
So Parag Parag is more for editing, for the editing side of stuff. Because you're not just, can you not write in there? I've written in there. I mean, I imagine you could. It's probably think... quite distracting though, because it like keeps flagging stuff up like obnoxiously. Yeah, yeah. I think it kind of, what, what you just said kind of proves the point there that like, at, at bottom line, whatever you can write on, um, mm -hmm. you know, there is, there really, we, we, we will say this a lot, there is no right tool really for actually getting the writing down. Yeah. Like, for for a few people, Microsoft Word is perfect. People are familiar with it. It's a place. Mm -hmm. It's a word processing software. That's what it's for. Yeah. Um, for myself, as you mentioned, like Scrivener is solid. Google Docs is ideal because, as you say, it cloud saves. It's all collaborative. But yeah, wherever wherever you can yeah. put your keyboard. Yeah, and just in a like again, I'll touch on what I said before. Um, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. If you're comfortable with Word, use Word. Yeah. Like, if you if you've you know never used any of these things because you like writing pen to paper, mm -hmm. try writing pen to paper. I know a few people that write their first drafts pen to paper. I have people who do it on their phone. Yeah. Just in their notes app, just type it away in like gaps between the day, which is nuts. Astounding. Well, I mean, well, I mean, for example, like I'd like to write. I, I like to start at the beginning and finish at the end, but there are people that like to write all over the place and it works for them. I don't understand how it gives me a migraine, yeah. Yeah. but I don't need to understand how, cause it works for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've just invested in a, um, a, what they call a free write, uh, what's it called? Traveler. Although this one's a free write alpha, um, which is basically just a keyboard with a tiny little screen that's meant to be built for distraction free. So in terms of that, it's just, you know, you type and you just see the most recent line that you've written. Oh, so yeah, it, kind of, it, it motivates you just to keep moving forward. Um, but yeah, I mean, the actual writing part, I think what a lot of writers tend to start doing is um, think that there's a better way just to get words on paper. And so they procrastinate and stay away from their story when a lot of that resistance comes from the fear of beginning to actually write the story. Mm -hmm. but yeah just find a program simple is always better especially when it comes to just writing that first draft at least yeah and for me the reason the reason i go to scrivener um it, it's a couple fold like there's no reason that it's better than word at all um for, for me really like the reason i stick with scrivener is because it was my first investment in myself as a writer and so yeah and so like i already had word at that point but i saw scrivener it was like i think it was 30 quid at the time um, and so I, I bought it and was like, okay, this is where I write. And I just made that statement to myself. I made that distinction and I've stuck with it ever since. It's where I write all of my first drafts. It's where I do all of my research and my planning. Um, and it's just pretty robust for that. Like it's got word trackers, it's got focus modes again. So does most other software. Mm. Um, but yeah, for me, I've, I've trained my brain very, very specifically to appreciate how Scrivener looks when I write. So if I'm trying to draft in word, it, feels fundamentally different to my mind yeah and that's kind of the point we're getting at here like training yeah. your mind into the actual writing process is more important than the actual tool that you pick for it yourself yeah you've got to be pavlov and the dog yeah, <laughs> <Ding>. <laughs> yeah yeah and that kind of brings us a bit nicely onto editing so like i think when it comes to editing um your book once you've you know written down you got that first draft Mm -hmm. I think we'd probably end up here just, you know, referring to a lot of stuff we've already mentioned. Um, what I'll say is for my particular process, what I like to do is I've written, so I've planned my book in Scrivener. I've mm -hmm. written my book in Scrivener. Mm -hmm. And then once the book is, the, or the first draft at least is complete, I transfer it all over into Word. <laughs> like, okay. just the whole thing, I just dump into Word. Um, and again, my rationale for this is that I, I spent a few years as a copyright, uh, copy reader. Oh my god proofreader and a copy editor there we go it's that a few hours break but yeah i spent a few years as a proofreader and a copy editor and all of the work that i did on that was through word so i got very accustomed to like the track changes so, oh, for, yeah. so for my analytical side what i've done is in scrivener i've written that first draft that's my creative side and then seeing it in word i i, I even like lay out the pages in certain ways so it like looks like how a book would mm. and then i track changes just because again that triggers my brain and like shows me where i've been working through and then because it's different in how I view it to how it was in Scrivener, it means that my mind can view it differently for editing. So it creates a level of detachment in my mind where I can kind of go, okay, now this is the editing side of things. Yeah. Um, and again, that's not because Word is better at editing for that. It's just that's how is how yeah. I've my process and how I've trained my mind to react to these things. I'm so sorry. Like 
to you mostly but also to anybody that is watching i keep yawning and it's nothing to do with what to do with you it's to do it really with the hurts i'm trying quite a hard here <laughs> insomnia has really been kicking my ass lately and yeah. so yeah hence the constant and i'm gonna do it again yawning <sighs> um so for me and bearing in mind again that like i'm very still very new when it comes to this process um as in the writing process not as in my process um which i'm very much still <laughs> hammering out um I got to the end wrote the end went <laughs> um and then like once I'd had a little break an extended break after the rush to get it done um I just went back into the same document I don't track changes because I don't understand how to do it yeah. um and also I just find it really I can't stand like when you're freaking thing floats over something it's like also this i'm like ah, i just yeah. need to see it so i literally just went back to the beginning i just read it through and then i just started changing the bits that i wanted to change and if there was anything that i was like okay i need to add like an entire scene or chapter or something like that i would open a fresh document copy like the paragraph above that i edited pop that in and then just write fresh. Yeah. And I'd like, I'd reference from that. And then when it was done, I would just copy that back into the original mm -hmm. document. But, you know, again, I'm very new at this. Uh, I still, like, it wasn't that long ago where I was like, what the fuck is Scrivener? You mm -hmm. keep saying this weird word and I don't understand what it is. It yeah. sounds like Scribbler, but it isn't. Um, could someone please explain to me what is a Scrivener? Yeah. And the thing with um, Google Docs as well that is quite useful um, and invisible unless you specifically look for it is it does keep track of all your changes. So it, it, mm. each time it saves, it keeps um, a record of that version. So if you ever need to jump back for any reason, like you can pull That's out cool. history. Yeah, it's useful. Um, and then as you've mentioned for, for editing a book, um, things that are very, very popular yeah. right now, you've got Pro Writing Aid, you've got uh, Grammarly as another example for like an extension. Mm -hmm install that will take you through and kind of pick out bits and pieces to help you refine your writing um nothing really beats a human editor um or a proofreader so it's always worth adding that to your set but as a general combing through just to make things as clean as possible and to also kind of pick out common um mistakes is the wrong word common like ticks and habits that maybe mm -hmm. aren't necessarily useful to your writing like uh, every sentence with the word so for example calling yeah. myself out here oh yeah i i go so. um yeah, so they're a couple that are quite useful for editing. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, you go. Sorry. <laughs> I was I was just going to say, um, when you do get to the point where you're kind of editing spelling and grammar, that kind of stuff, um, just be just be mindful when you're accepting changes from like Pro Writing Aid or Grammarly or anything like that, because a lot of them especially if it's your first book will probably be accurate but they can also but they they don't understand voice mm. like like how you're trying to convey things so just it just something to bear in mind that like you don't have to accept everything that they're suggesting um and while i encourage you to write your first draft quickly um and that's quickly for you i'm not saying compare yourself to other people's writing speed um but you know like haul ass, get yourself through it so you don't have to think too much. I would encourage you to edit a lot slower and like break down passes. Like trying to like make all the changes in one go is a losing game. <laughs> I know I tried, it drove me insane. <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely do like a, a much more deeper look at editing on one yeah. of the other. Yeah. Um, so that takes us through generally the writing process from sort of mm -hmm. writing the book and editing. Um, in terms of key things that I think are useful for new writers to know for the publishing side of stuff. So I think if you're quite early, early on in your journey, don't worry too much about these, but it's probably um, nice to at least hear these terms to start getting familiar with it. But um, if you're looking at softwares and tools to format your book, really at the minute, the best that I've seen uh, in the industry is Vellum. 
which mm. is unfortunately exclusive for, for Mac users at this point. Um, there are ways to get it on Windows, which involves sort of like virtual Mac systems and, and playing around. So if you're good with tech, you can make that happen. But like I've kind of played around with Vellum and it's uh, kind of upcoming rival, I guess, um, released from the uh, Dave Chesson from over at Kindlepreneur, brought out Atticus, which is very much a work in progress, but it's it's got a lot of potential to be a very, very good formatting software. Um, for me personally, like I'm still Vellum does everything it needs to for me. It just it just works perfectly. Um, Atticus has a lot more functionality, but it's just not quite there for me yet. Um, but I'm excited to see where it goes because I'm I'm seeing them con- continually develop and, and work on it. So I have no doubt that's going to you know change in the next year or so. Um, but there are also like a bunch of other useful tools and things. So all listed in the self publishing blueprint. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, my 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 kind of go to is is Vellum, just without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, I mean, I I won't comment on this because it's still an ongoing process for me, and I think it would be like disingenuous for me to be like, yeah, like Vellum is great because I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, and then just a mention: we won't go too deeply into this. Um, you can also hire people to format your book, of course. Like there are yes. services, you, there are like cheap places like Fiverr and stuff. People will format your book. Like there are there are many options to make that happen. It's one of the things yeah. I love about today's self publishing industry. Yeah. Um, can't off the top of my head, I, I can't think of much more for publishing straight off. But going into things like marketing, um. Again, this is a very, very big subject we'll probably go more deeply into, but just a couple mm-hmm. of things that I think are very fundamental to understand or to at least think of um, as you kind of look into creating an author business. Mm-hmm. Um, you will need a newsletter provider. If you can start building a mailing list, a mailing list should really be the backbone of your author career in terms of you communicating directly with readers, building that list, being able to sell, and that's one of the big systems that helps keep you afloat as an author. Mm-hmm. Uh, a website never hurts people will look for you. So give them a place to find you. Um, I've put on here something that you're very familiar with, Sam, which is Canva as a tool for creating social posts and just as a way to use templates just to design. Um, I don't know if you want to touch on that one. Yeah, so like Canva is, I would say, is probably kind of the most popular one at the moment. It has like so many templates. Um for like a variety of different things um so you can literally you know say if you wanted to make a instagram post just a normal static post you could type that in it'll come up already with like the the square so you don't have to worry about like sizing and all the rest of it and so many different templates and so many different styles and they're pretty much fully customizable um there's bits and pieces that are like a bit more stubborn like some of the things you can't change the colors on and stuff and that's a shit but for the most part for the most part sorry <clears throat> it's really good um you can pay for it i think it's like a tenner a month but there is a free um you can like use it for free as well just some of the features are kind of like off limits um and then something that i've been using recently i think it i I keep getting confused with what it's called. I think it's Mojo. I think that's what it's called. Yes. Um, yeah. And it creates um, some really like slick kind of modern uh, graphics. And, you know, again, like that's customizable and you can you can use that. And it looks really, it just looks really um, slick and like professional. I think I just said those two things already, but it does. Um, and it is really like they they change the things um all the time and it's in they have like the templates in the different categories Mm. or you can like start from scratch and and make your own stuff but I think it um if you are looking at social media um in particular to use as a marketing tool um which is absolutely an option I mean it doesn't have to be but if that's something you're interested in I think it um it makes a lot of sense to look at these things just because we're past the point of this stuff being new yeah and so like readers will like you should judge a book by its cover <laughs> that's what it's for um, <laughs> yeah and like with kind of promotion posts and stuff like that people are are 
accustomed to a certain level of gloss or sheen or or whatever um so I just think it makes a lot of sense to kind of like play around with these tools yeah um, and they're very user friendly and when when I say that you have to understand that like when Dan was just talking about like vellum you can there's ways to like cheat it on a but it was just like my brain just logged out like uh -huh. on i was like my eyes bossed i had no idea what he's talking about so for me to say it's pretty like easy to use mm -hmm. you it's a safe bet you'll you'll figure it out <laughs> yeah yeah and then as, as you say particularly where we are in the state of technology and things like these so these services have moved far enough now that they try and make things as simple as possible and it's yeah really not too difficult to make something that looks somewhat semi-professional um no matter what you're looking at and uh, canva even I've, I've done a few bits recently where i've made videos on canva because oh, yeah. um, it's videos are a bit more fiddly on, on canva but it, yeah. it's possible you can do it um yeah. so yeah definitely things like canva um other options if you're doing things like book covers um teasers and things services like book brush can be oh, very those yeah, for making mock-ups and doing sort of cool social media imagery and things. Mm -hmm. um, use that a couple of times. I've seen quite a few of the, my author friends do use use that quite a lot. Um, and then, and again, I'm, I'm aware that we're kind of like going through quite a lot of options and these will be listed in the show notes. I have, don't worry, Sam, I've been writing them down for you. Thank God. I'm yeah, just I'll, crying I'll, over here. Yeah, and they're in categories as well. So Thank God. Hopefully, hopefully everything mentioned in this episode is nicely listed uh below in the show notes for you to look at i am a child i don't have time <laughs> well it's a lot it's a lot um but the whole point of this episode is the overview so again we'll we'll definitely yeah. dive deeper into this stuff in future episodes and things um but yeah a few more things just to to finish off marketing uh, a very very useful software that i use is for um scanning competition market research trying to look up keywords and categories and things um mm. which so it, I'll, I'll go into what it is before I kind of like go over users, but um, it's called Publish, Publisher Rocket. So Publisher Rocket, what that does is it's a software that you pay for, you download, and it basically allows you to scan the stores. You type in sort of, you know, horror fiction, and it will come up with a list of the top sort of performing horror fiction, breaks mm -hmm. it down into the stats of where it is in the charts, even goes into as granular as, you know, how much they're kind of estimated to be earning per week, per month, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So you can then really see what's performing. If you're, if you're someone who's really digging deep into their market research so before you even started yeah. writing the book this can be a very useful tool just to scan see what's doing well see where where it's best to kind of direct your attention if you're writing to market mm -hmm. um, it's also useful once you've written your book to then obviously look into keywords categories and to pull out this list of um search engine optimization friendly terms that you can then use to promote and sell your book on stores yeah again that I, gets a bit of the weeds but well i was gonna say like it sounds because I've heard this before, so this is not my first time hearing it. Because when the first time you hear it, it sounds so much. Yes. Um, so what I would say is um, if you think of it as it's just a tool to help you best position your book on the like virtual shelf, mm -hmm. that's what it's used for. Yeah. Um, I imagine there's a learning curve. It, once again, like I'm not there yet, so I can't like I can't add my two cents, but yeah. I, I like it is a lot <laughs> it is a lot like from start to finish it's a whole bunch yeah um, I mean there's a reason that like publishing a book is a journey is it, it really is a marathon yeah um, <laughs> this is very good though I hey, do recommend this this is so good in blueprint mm -hmm. by Daniel Pilcox yeah <laughs> again like and weirdly enough that wasn't the conception for this episode but like the whole the whole point of writing that book was because this journey can seem huge when you look at all mm -hmm. of if you don't know the stepping stones like it looks very very overwhelming but the whole point of that book is to lay out step by step so that you can start on one because that's yeah. that's all we do that's that's how any author journey starts like my my journey started with just picking a software and writing a book mm -hmm. well it, it had a lot it wasn't that simple but you know what i mean um so yeah this is definitely in the weeds but again sort of just just mentioning the stuff to to give yeah. you an overview as uh, yeah. used um and then i won't go into all the individual ones but you know there are a bunch of um publishing platforms so if you're choosing to self-publish you can choose amazon you can choose kobo you can use services which publish to loads of different ones that you know it just makes it easier to handle um so knowing a platform you're going to be using as a useful tool to know 
Um, and then just polishing off sort of towards the end, a little bit of what we spoke about on last week's episode about business. Um, mm. You'll likely need, depending on what stage you're at, a business bank account. Yeah. You'll likely need some way to track your finances and preferably a way to track your publishing schedule so you can kind of create some kind of deadline to see where you're going with your books. Yeah. And I will say that opening a business bank account is a lot easier than you think it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, they love it. <laughs> I was just like, this is ridiculously easy. Oh, especially through the bank that you went through. They make it yeah. incredibly easy. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's an online bank. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a broad overview of some of the, the, the key tools that, you know, people in Activated Authors use, ones that I use myself, ones that Sam's starting to use. Mm -hmm. um, they will definitely serve you well if you're looking at just, you know, writing the book and then going beyond that should you wish to because again like a lot of this you might not necessarily need to use if you're going through a traditional publishing route and looking for agents and things like some of that might be handled um but yeah broad scope of the top tools to use particularly in 2022 and where they're at um if there are any if there are any that you think that we've missed then feel free to reach out message us and we'll find a way to add it to the list but i think that's pretty comprehensive at this point yeah i mean i think like you said to me with the poetry project that I'm working on at the minute with a ridiculous timeline and so many things to do, like it's good to be aware of that, but just take it one step at a time. Yep. That's all you need. That's all you need. One foot in front of the other. Yeah. Just, not just a three mile stretch of a leg. <laughs> <laughs> go, 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 gadget leg. <laughs> so that brings us to the end of the question. Uh, we will be... Well, let me try that again. So um, for this week's episode, we're going to be promoting the fact that we have a 30 day free trial in Activated Authors. So if you like the sound of this podcast, if you feel like you're getting value from listening to this and you want to find out more about myself and Sam and join us on live sprints, join us over in our Slack group and talk to us personally, then all you have to do is go over to activatedauthors.com. And on the front page, it gives you all the information that you need. You can start your 30 day free trial. It is no commitment so if you want to cancel at any point that's totally up to you like i really honestly don't mind if people come into the group and they stay for three days and go this isn't for me and leave or even 28 days and then go i've used it thanks and then go like yeah however we can use this to help you is really why we're here so mm -hmm. you can get your 30 day free trial over at activatedauthors.com yeah perfect and now into the final monologue a massive thank you oh go on you know, well, I was just about I was about to start humming a song, but then thought about copyright, so I didn't. <laughs> hey Master, thank you to you, listeners, for tuning in. We appreciate you and the time you should spend with us each and every week. And as always, if you're looking to level up your writing and activate your author career, head on over to activateyourauthors.com to find out all about our community, our resources, and everything else that we've got going on. One more time for myself and Sam. We will see you next week. Goodbye. Oh, and I did want to add as well, good luck to everyone in Nano. And hopefully by this time this is published, you've done a cracking load of words. And yeah, that is awesome. And, you know, there are a few more days left until the end of November. But keep on pushing because you've got this. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fucking smooth. I Bye. Know. <laughs> Bye, folks. Bye. <laughs> Activate your energy. <laughs>